Tennessee's wild side that makes you want to go find a natural way of living when just outside your door. Every day's a new adventure and it's right before your eyes. Spend a little time on Tennessee's wild side. Hello everybody and welcome in. I'm Bill Cody. And I'm Janet Ivey. We're glad you're with us. An illness discovered three years ago in the Northeast is spreading southward and is now threatening wildlife in Tennessee. It's called white nose syndrome, a fungus that appears on the faces, ears, wings, and feet of hibernating bats. Scientists are still puzzled by the disease that has already killed an estimated half million bats, including nearly 25,000 endangered Indiana bats. There's no evidence that white nose is harmful to humans, but it's killing bats at such a pace that drastic prevention methods have already been put in place here in our state, as Wild Side Guide Ken Tucker explains. They are some of nature's most mysterious and misunderstood creatures. Flying out of their caves at night, bats help maintain our natural world by hunting insects, pollinating plants, and scattering seeds. Bats have been around for close to 50 million years, and with more than 1,100 different kinds of bats, they account for nearly one quarter of all mammal species. A growing number of bats have made their homes in Tennessee's more than 9,000 caves, but their lives are now endangered by a disease just as mysterious as the bats themselves. White nose syndrome, an illness as strange as its name, is killing bats by the thousands. That's why caves on public land in Tennessee are closed. I see it as a, as a huge threat. It has a devastating effect on the bat populations that it, that it enters. White nose syndrome comes from a fungus in the soil and literally turns portions of the bat's bodies white while making them act differently. In the winter, while the bats are hibernating, they'll leave their hibernaculum too early. And so once they leave their hibernaculum and get out into weather that's too cold for them, they either starve to death or they, they die from, from the element. The TWRA is monitoring gray bat caves with thermal infrared photography, counting the number of bats exiting during nighttime feeding hours. Our number one priority in Tennessee is to protect our gray bat population. That's, the gray bats are an endangered species. They only hibernate in eight caves in the world. Two of those are in Tennessee. Before you begin wondering about the importance of bats, consider this. One small brown bat can eat thousands of insects in a single night. That includes mosquitoes, which might otherwise be biting you, as well as moss, which in caterpillar form can damage crops. Bats also help ensure the delicate balance of nature in caves. Caves are fragile ecosystems. Animals that live in them often count on each other to survive. Waste products from the bats, for example, provide the energy needed for small animals that never leave caves. Take away the bats and those animals will likely perish. Hardin's Cave is a good example of a cave at risk. Scouts and others have worked to clean up trash and other debris left in the cave by careless people. Now owned by the Southeastern Cave Conservancy, Hardin's Cave is healthy after being gated to limit public access. The water's running smooth, the stream is, is, is cleared up, the aquatic life is coming back. The bat population is growing. Uh, we've gone from under 20 bats in the, the late 90s to almost 1,000 that, that are in the cave year round. That's why Hardin's Cave and many others are now closed for at least a year. Closing it was a tough decision, but I could not leave it open knowing what, what will happen if, if, if the white nose gets into the cave. It is suspected, but not proven, that people help to transmit white nose syndrome. But so little is known about the condition that the drastic step of closing caves on public lands is believed to be the best opportunity to stop the disease's spread. We have one opportunity or one chance to get this right. With a 95% mortality rate, the bats won't recover, probably not in my lifetime from, from this. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side. 
Visit our website at tnwildside.com and you'll learn more about white nose syndrome. Caves located on public land are expected to be closed for at least a year to prevent the disease's spread. While biologists are still learning about white nose syndrome, and so far there appears to be no risk to humans, officials do urge taking precautions and not exposing yourself unnecessarily to the disease.